Katie from Juicy Body Art and Face Painting and I've had a lot of people ask me lately um, what I use to stick my cakes to my kit and um, I've explained that I use these little babies here they're called rare earth magnets you'll see these are a couple of whoops <laughs> they're very very strong Ooh! <laughs> there are a couple of different sizes here this one is a little bit rounder. It's, it's probably about 10 millimeters um, and a bit thinner. These are um, these are all individual magnets. It's very, very hard to break them apart with just one hand because they are that strong. No, I can't do it. Um, but yeah, they're less than a millimeter, probably a millimeter or less in thickness. And these are about 10 mils wide. Um, and these ones are the ones that I got earlier. These are the widest and thinnest that I could get originally. Um, but these are actually, uh, I prefer the bigger ones, the slightly smaller ones. Sometimes you have to use two um, and they sit up off your magnet, your magnetized surface um, a little bit, a little bit too high. It's better to get the flat, flat, fat ones than it is to get skinny, tall ones. You can get these magnets online. Just search for rare earth magnets um, and you can get them. You know how there's heaps of heaps of those little websites selling knickknacks and gadgets really, really cheap online, even eBay. That's that's where I get them from. And they're pretty cheap. I think for about a hundred for a hundred of these, probably about, I don't know, 10 bucks or something like that. Um, and considering that they last and like you will always find a hundred million uses for them. Buy them in bulk for as cheap as you possibly can, and you, they'll hang around. Seriously, you will find you will find some amazing MacGyvery um, ideas on how to use these. But um, what I wanted to show you is how these things actually work. So basically, I've magnetized all of my paints. Um, each one of these little fellas, let's, let's flip one around for you so you can see. Each one of these has a couple of magnets attached to it, um, just with a bit of electrical tape. See this stuff? This stuff that you just have lying around the house? Um, yeah, a bit of electrical tape. And the reason why I like electrical tape is because it's quite stretchy. Um, it's it will actually stretch around the magnets nicely so that they're in kind of a little bubble of their own um, and yeah and it's it's waterproof as well because it's uh, it's non-porous and it's designed to wrap around wires and stay wrapped around wires for a very very long time um, so electrical tape really does the job nicely it keeps it nice and waterproof I do find that um, these magnets can sometimes um, the coating around them can rust if they stay wet and they sit in water. So it's best to put something around them, some, something protective, just like this electrical tape, so that they stay nice and dry and they don't go all rusty in your case. Um, these are stuck to, let me just swipe some paints out of the way. These are stuck to a bit of whiteboard, a little bit of metallic whiteboard. You could go to Bunnings and just get some um, some steel cut to size if you want to. I found um, some little sort of A4 sized uh, whiteboards at Officeworks for about four bucks each. And all I did was just tore them to pieces and very carefully with gloves peeled out just the whiteboard metal. It's a very, very thin, thin sheet of metal. Um, and I pulled that out and laid it down on the surface of my palette. As you can see here, I use a core flute palette. Lay it down and put some duct tape, really good high quality duct tape around the edges. And that's enough to keep it stuck to my, stuck to my palette. And because it's so very, very thin, it's really lightweight and it doesn't weigh a whole heap in my kit. I find that the stuff that you get from Bunnings can be quite thick um, and it adds a lot of weight to your kit. So that's why I chose these bits of whiteboard. Um, I can't tell you where to get the bits of whiteboard other than I found mine at Officeworks really cheap. Um, garage sales, secondhand stores, um, all over the place. Um, cheapy $2 shops, you'll find, you'll find them anywhere you like. 
um, just find whatever's cheapest because it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be expensive to work. Um, so that's what it's all stuck to. So every single one of my cakes has ooh, can you see that? There we go. Has um, a magnet attached with electrical tape, and it just sits really nicely um, here in my kit. And yeah, they can slide side to side a little bit, which is why, as you can see, my entire my entire um, palette is made up of rectangles, and they're all solidly, you know, connected next to each other. They're all right next to each other, so that it's a nice grid, and they don't move around because they're all packed in like that. Um, maybe if you had, you know, round cakes or whatever floating around then yeah, if you bump your kit around as much as I do, they'd probably move around a little bit. And um, if you put on some extra magnets, you could stop that from happening. But as it is, I find that one magnet per one stroke cake is more than enough for it to stay put. And two magnets per large rectangular, it's about a 60 gram cake. Um, so, I'd say roughly a magnet each 30 grams is totally, totally sufficient. Um, I've also used these magnets for my stencils, to keep my stencils nice and neat. Now what I've done with the back of my case here, as you can see, duct tape is my friend. Um, so what I've done is, what you can't see under here, these are just thin strips of steel that I got from Bunnings. Um, it's just, yeah, it's literally like one one or two mil thick. Uh, it's stuff that you, you're supposed to use for shelving. Um, and what I did was I grabbed a few of those. I think they were about two bucks each. Put them where I wanted them on my kit. I've got four rows of them here, as you can see. And then I duct taped them down. Um, they don't move. They stay nice and put. Um, and I can stick stuff to them. So I usually stick my glitters all over them. I put a magnet on the lid of the glitter and pop it onto here so that I can, because I like picking up, the reason why I did the magnets is because I really like picking up my paints to load them. So especially one strokes, that's why I've got them right here, right next to my little working area, because I like to pick them up to load them properly. I like to hold them on their side. Um, that's entirely a personal thing. Um, but yeah, so I like, I love the magnets because they actually allow you to pick things up and then you pop them straight back down and there's no pushing like, you know, if you had blue tack or if you had Velcro, you don't have to wiggle anything in there. It just stays because it's magnets um, and they're really, really high strength. So you don't really need to do much to them. Um, so what I've done is attach these little magnets, as you can see, to each individual stencil. So they just sit, they sit in a little clump just like that. Um, if you're, just remember, magnets have uh, a north pole and a south pole. So um, if you want to do this, if you want to clump your magnets together like that, make sure you're thinking about the north and south and you put them in the right direction um, so that they're nice and neat like that, because I'm a bit of a, a bit anally retentive. Um, but yeah, this is great. I really love this because it they sit as a clump in my case and if there's a particular one that I really just want to take out of the clump so that I'm, I haven't got a massive pile of, of stencils on a ring smacking my client in the face, I can just, it's hard to do with one hand, I can just pop one off and use it and then pop it back onto the pile. So that's another way that I, that I use my magnets. Um, just to show you, I've got my little half ass stencils here. Just to show you, uh, these are on a ring because there's just so many of them. I could, there's, I don't know how many there are, like 40 here, 60, I don't know. Um, I couldn't be bothered attaching a magnet to every single one of those, so that's why this one's on a ring. Um, but as you can see, I've just got a little magnet. I've got some electrical tape, just a length of electrical tape. And what I, what I do is, oh, it's sticking to the ring. It's very hard to do with one hand, so I'll do my best. But I just fold the electrical tape over the magnet like that. Oops. Fold it over so that it's got a little house. And then I wrap it under and stick it on. That's a bit messy because I did it with one hand. But as you can see, it's easy to take off and then easy to put back on. 
So that solves the issue of, you know, hooks and Velcro and all of that stuff catching and dragging your lid in. So that's where, oops, get back there. Um, that's where those guys live. Um, I've also magnetized the back of my brush wallet. As you can see, I love tape. Tape is the bomb. It's waterproof and it stays on, even in hot weather, which you have to think about when you're in Australia. So um, magnets at the back. And I've made sure that it lines up with my little metal strips here. And so even my brushes don't fall off now. Um, because they're all attached, they're all in their little elasticy bits, and this is nice and firm up in the top of my case. So if it's a windy day and the case lid, the case lid starts to open and close um, and blow around in the wind, my brushes don't fall into the water, which is the worst thing ever. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show you guys. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you. Um, if you dig my face painting tips, nice to talk to you guys. I hope that this has helped a few of you with some ideas of how you can pimp out your kit a little bit better. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.